any relation. You just look like a man. I'll do Hello. Hi. 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 Hey, good morning, General Turner. This is Jim Turner at the Pentagon. Can you hear me? I can. Uh, good morning. Um, our briefer today is Major General Thomas R. Turner II, uh, Commander of Multinational Division North and the 101st Airborne Division. He and his command are responsible for ongoing security operations in northern Iraq. This is his first visit with us from Iraq, and he is here to provide us an operational update. Uh, General Turner has an opening statement, and then we'll take your questions. Uh, remember, he cannot see us, so please identify yourself when asking your questions. So, General Turner, welcome, and thanks for joining us today. Well, good morning. I'd like to thank you all uh, for being here today and for this opportunity to address the great work that our soldiers are doing in Iraq. I'd like to begin by giving you a little background on our task force, our battle space, our mission, and finally some areas where we're seeing progress. The 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault, first assumed responsibility for the area known as Multinational Division North Central from the 42nd Infantry Division on November 1st. On December 30th, we assumed responsibility for Task Force Freedom's Multinational Force Northwest which combined constitutes our current area of responsibility known as MND North. MND North is about the size of uh, Pennsylvania, about 47,000 square miles, and it covers the provinces of Diala, Saladin, Kirkuk, Sulaymaniyah, Ninawa, and Dahuk. It covers from just north of Baghdad to the border with Turkey, and in the west from the Syrian border the Iranian border in the east. Population is approximately 10.2 million, and all of the Iraqi ethnic and religious groups are represented in the AO. The task force consists of approximately 23,000 U.S. soldiers, which includes three brigades from the 101st, the 172nd Striker Brigade Combat Team from Alaska, the 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment, and the 3rd Brigade 4th Infantry Division from Port Carson, Colorado, and it includes uh, the 555 Combat Support Brigade Maneuver Enhancement out of Fort Lewis, Washington. We also have tactical control of about 105,000 members of the Iraqi Security Forces. That includes four Iraqi Army Divisions, one Strategic Infrastructure Brigade, 14 Strategic Infrastructure Battalions, and four Border Police Brigades. Our mission in northern Iraq is to develop Iraqi security forces capable of conducting independent counterinsurgency operations within MND North while simultaneously conducting combined operations to neutralize AIF. This is in support of the Iraqi government's ongoing efforts to improve internal security, foster economic growth, and the maintenance of basic infrastructure. We are partnered with the second, third, 4th and 5th Iraqi Army Divisions. These units have made tremendous progress in their training and the ability to provide the citizens of Iraq the security they deserve. Iraqi soldiers and policemen are in the fight every day. They're risking not only their lives, but often the lives of their family for the security of their fellow citizens. Iraqi citizens are also stepping forward in the fight to secure their country. Tips from concerned Iraqis to both Iraqi security forces and coalition forces have led to the discovery of numerous weapons caches and IED making materials. As you know, in the December parliamentary election, the voter turnout was a tremendous success. The Independent Electoral Commission of Iraq determined that 70% of those uh, Iraqis eligible to vote voted over 11 million did so despite the threats of violence. In the six provinces within MND North, 75% of those registered voted. The high voter turnout is a clear indicator that the citizens of Iraq not only have a strong desire for democracy, but they also have an increased sense of security, security that during the latest election was provided entirely by Iraqi security forces. Iraqis continue to advance in other areas as well, one government capability that has progressed tremendously 
is the Joint Coordination Centers, which are located throughout every province and municipalities. The JCCs have become extremely effective in coordinating emergency service responses. Their planning and the Iraqi Security Forces execution of that plan was primarily responsible for a safe and secure vote during the December elections. Our most important mission, however, remains the training and equipping of Iraqi security forces. Working together, we will support the continued progress toward a democratic Iraq. Our end state remains unchanged, and Iraq at peace with our neighbors, with a representative government that respects the human rights of all Iraqis, with a security force capable of maintaining domestic order and denying safe haven to terrorists. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. Okay, let's get into it. Charlie? Uh, General Charlie Ollinger with Reuters. Uh, uh, the, the 101st is essentially an air assault division where you guys uh, are designed to use a lot of helicopters to get around. Do you use a lot of big helicopters to get around in northern Iraq? And uh, are you concerned about the recent crashes of U.S. helicopters? Uh, including the possible use of these new so-called jumping IEDs. There are uh, several questions there. Uh, we have had uh, two helicopter crashes, both of which are uh, still under investigation. In the first, it uh, appears to be an accident uh, in western Nineveh, and uh, the second uh, crash of no H-58 in uh, downtown Mosul uh, was the small arms fire. Uh, we have not witnessed any uh, jumping IEDs that, that you mentioned in uh, RAO. Uh, I'm extremely proud of the safety record of the aviation units in the, the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, it is constantly a part of our daily operations and uh, the, the training that uh, our pilots receive is outstanding. Additionally, prior to deploying into Iraq, each crew qualified in some specific task in Kuwait to ensure that they were prepared uh, to fly in this environment. Have you reduced, have you reduced in any way the the use of big helicopters to move a larger number of troops around because of this possible threat? No, not at all. Uh, General Eric Schmidt with the New York Times. I know you and other commanders have described the insurgency as, as a diverse group, uh, both of AQI, former regime elements and such. But I wonder, at least from your perspective, you can say what is uh, which which element of the insurgency, which component uh, poses the, the most immediate threat uh, to both your forces and the, uh, the new Iraqi government, or or, the, or that's, that's basically driving the insurgency, if there is such a component now? I think uh, that's uh, difficult to discern. I think we have made uh, great strides in... Uh, uh, neutralizing uh, the terrorists and foreign fighters uh, in the country. But uh, in, in terms of threat, uh, all the uh, insurgent groups seem to have the same uh, weapon of choice against coalition forces, which is uh, the IED. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure uh, w which one would uh, be a greater threat. What about longer term? Do you have a sense there of which poses the longer term? threat to security in Iraq? Well, with uh, successful elections, if uh, the Sunnis uh, uh, are enfranchised and begin participating in the political process as uh, we think they are beginning to do, uh, as witnessed through uh, uh, the election and uh, voter turnout, uh, I would suspect it would be uh, the uh, foreign fighters that you may find uh, still resident here, uh, other uh, jihadist religious extremist groups, and uh, uh, I think that would probably be the greatest threat that needs to, to be dealt with right now. General, 
Jimmy McIntyre from CNN. Can you say categorically that all the troops under your command have all the body armor uh, that they need to complete their mission? And are you sensing any reluctance among some troops uh, to wear large amounts of body armor because it hampers their mobility? No, not at all. Uh, we do have uh, the best body armor available, and our troops are wearing it. And uh, we have confirmed that uh, we have gotten the latest update for body armor. All the troops under your command have all the body armor they need? That's correct. General Lisa Meyer from AP Radio. It was an interesting article in the Washington Post yesterday which um, talked about some of the stuff that your guys are doing out in the field and the fact that um, th they're finding more encounters with IEDs and they're taking uh, countermeasures and trying to improvise some solutions to the problem. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. And also, secondarily, um, are you finding that there are any surprises uh, that you've encountered since being on the ground in Iraq, things that you didn't expect before you got there? Uh, the last one first. No, I don't think uh, we found uh, any surprises. Uh, we do have uh, soldiers and commanders that uh, continue to be innovative in addressing the latest uh, tactics and technique that uh, this enemy may be employing. Uh, <clears throat> this enemy is an adaptive enemy. He will continue uh, to adapt to our countermeasures. And uh, so some commanders are innovating in, in terms of what they are uh, uh, doing with their vehicles. Some are adding armor in, uh, in places that they think are particularly uh, vulnerable to the type of threat they might face in their particular uh, battle space. Uh, Jim Mannion from uh, Agence France Press. I, I, I wonder if you could talk at all about what evidence, if any, you see of the Sunni insurgent groups in your area moving away from an armed struggle uh, towards, uh, um, you know, some sort of political participation. I, I don't know if I, I would see that in our area. General, it's uh, John Hendren at National Public Radio. After the battle for Fallujah, um, there were reports that Zarqawi and a number of foreign fighters had fled up toward the Mosul area. And I was wondering if you still believe that he might be in that vast territory that you oversee, and, and what evidence are you seeing of, of groups of foreign fighters up there? I didn't hear the second part, but we uh, we do suspect that Zalkari is still uh, present in our area of operation somewhere. Second question was what what evidence uh, are you seeing of other foreign fighters in there? Is there an organized network in that territory? Uh, we continue to see uh, uh, organized networks of uh, of Al Qaeda. Uh, we, do, we are very successful, I think, at uh, killing leadership. They do have uh, uh, ways to regenerate. Uh, of course, those that take their place are not, near, are not as skilled, don't have the experience as uh, the ones they're replacing, and uh, make far more mistakes, and it's much easier to, uh, it's getting easier and easier to find and uh, capture or kill them. Uh, General Julian Barnes from U.S. News and World Report. Uh, how many uh, months or how many weeks will it be in Mosul and Kirkuk when you'll be able to pull back routine American patrols and let the Iraqi army or the Iraqi police patrol those two cities by themselves? Well, the Iraqis are increasingly uh, moving into the lead. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, four Iraqi battalions that have assumed battle space in our area and uh, one brigade. Uh, the division uh, that uh, has responsibility for Mosul is uh, doing very well and in the next couple of months uh, will begin, they will have battalions that will begin to assume uh, battle space in, 
in that area, in, in Mosul in particular. What was the other city you asked about, sir? Kirkuk. And, and the same is true in Kirkuk, very close to turning over battle space uh, to the Iraqi army in, in, that, uh, in that area. Uh, a word about the police. Uh, that The Iraqi police will be an area of focus for us uh, in, in the coming year. Uh, we are currently in the process of establishing uh, uh, police uh, transition teams that are uh, USMPs and, and, uh, and others that are partnering with Iraqi police in each of uh, uh, the major urban centers. And uh, we anticipate uh, the performance and capability of the Iraqi police in those areas to improve uh, pretty dramatically. Some are doing very well right now. Uh, teams in place embedded with those Iraqi police units right now at this moment? In Mosul, yes, sir. They're just, they are. General, this is Joe Tabet with Al Hura TV. Uh, would you give us a, a clear idea about uh, the insurgency that you are facing, their tactics? How many foreign fighters uh, are involved in the operations? And uh, do you still believe, my second question, do you still believe that the Sunnis? are supporting the insurgency in your area? If I understood the question right, the first one was, uh, uh, do we still have foreign fighters uh, uh, fighting in Iraq? And uh, the second uh, is, are, are the Sunnis still supporting them? Uh, <clears throat> Yes, I think we still find very limited evidence of uh, foreign fighters in our area of operation. And uh, there are some Sunni groups that uh, uh, make uh, alliances of convenience based on uh, capabilities or uh, as they proceed. But I, I think uh, we will probably see fewer and fewer Sunni organizations aligned with uh, uh, terrorists and foreign fighters, I, I think the Iraqi people fully realize that uh, the goals of al-Qaeda are not uh, compatible with the uh, Iraq of the future that they envision. Um, what? Thanks. Uh, General, this is Pam Hess with UPI. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning that um, one of the goals for Iraq is a country that pr uh, respects human rights, and I'm wondering uh, what your experience is up there so far. How many Ministry of Interior inspections have gone on, the surprise raids we were hearing, hearing about um, that maybe you all supported, and what, the result, what are the results of them? What are results? <laughs> Human rights abuses uh, in our AO, uh, if they're discovered, are, are reported rapidly. I will tell you that uh, we have uh, Ministry of Interior forces, uh, commando battalions, in uh, Samara, and uh, we have a, a special police transition team that is embedded with them. And uh, uh, there was a reported allegation of abuse there, but the brigade commander, uh, the Iraqi brigade commander, conducted the investigation uh, of that uh, abuse, and he was uh, relieved uh, immediately. Uh, if we see abuse, uh, we attempt to stop it, and it, it does not take much to stop it. If I can follow up. Um, uh, it's Pam again. Uh, my experience... No? Oh. One instance, uh, but we did see it uh, uh, after an attack uh, by I uh, Iraqi army units, one soldier uh, that was very upset at losing his, his buddies, and as soon as he was told by an American that was present, uh, he stopped. I think they're working very hard at uh, trying to do the right thing. Please. Could you tell me where that last incident was? I was talking over you. I'm sorry, what? Can you tell, uh, tell us where that last incident was, please? Sorry, could you say that location again, please? 
Yes, the incident with the uh, MOI occurred in Samara. Yeah. Uh, General, the Army has sent 170,000 sets of deltoid plates to Iraq. Uh, do your troops have these deltoid plates, and are they wearing them? Yes. All of your troops are wearing the deltoid plates? Commanders can uh, have them wear the plates uh, dependent on the, the situation. They're not wearing them on fobs, but they have the deltoid plates available when they go out on patrol, and uh, as far as I know, they're all wearing them. General Lolita Baldor with the Associated Press. Can you tell me whether there has been any reaction to the recent uh, release of the tape by Osama bin Laden in your area, and has there been any increase in violence, or do you expect that that may or may not trigger any increase in violence um, in your area? We have not seen uh, any reaction uh, to that tape, and uh, I don't think that will in and of itself uh, trigger any uh, increase in violence in this area. General Atal Pesson from Voice of America. Can you give us some idea of the uh, level of activity of the insurgency in your area over the last several months? I mean, how many attacks and uh, you're seeing and how effective they are, what the trends are? And uh, also, you mentioned that uh, you've hunted down and uh, killed some of the insurgent leaders, then they get replaced and you hunt down the replacements. Can you give us some uh, detail, maybe one or two of those stories in, in some detail or some uh, chronology? And finally, we've heard from other uh, commanders that uh, there, there have been some clashes or at least some very obvious disagreements between various elements of the insurgency. Have you seen any of that in your area? We have not seen open fighting between uh, insurgents uh, in our area of operation. Uh, we're encouraged by reports of it in uh, other areas, and uh, like I said earlier, uh, we think it's a clear signal that uh, uh, the Iraqi people do not see the goals of uh, al-Qaeda as uh, the, being a part of the future of Iraq. Uh, and. and did you ask me your first question again, please? Uh, yes, I, I wanted to get an idea of the trend line of the insurgency in your area, how many attacks, what type, and how effective, and also some details on the uh, killing of the uh, insurgent leaders that you mentioned earlier. The uh, uh, trends have been pretty constant since uh, we have arrived, and uh, uh, the attacks are primarily uh, IEDs, and uh, it's really been a, a steady state across uh, our area. Uh, there have been increased uh, attacks against uh, Iraqi security forces in some areas, in particular uh, against the Iraqi police. You've seen uh, what would appear to be assassinations in uh, Kirkuk. Okay, we've got time for about one more, please. General, it's uh, Mike Mount with uh, CNN. Uh, if I understood you earlier, you said uh, that you expected that uh, Zarqawi was still somewhere in your AOR. Uh, to the extent that you can, can you give us um, uh, some evidence of, of what you've seen um, that supports that? And if uh, there's anything along the lines of uh, the support network you might be seeing there? Yeah, we're, we're just uh, making the assumption that he's still here uh, leading uh, uh, AQIZ. I don't have any hard evidence that he's still in this area. Okay, General. Well, we appreciate you uh, coming to uh, visit us today in the uh, Pentagon briefing room, and we hope to see you again in the future soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.